Hi everybody. So this will be a introduction and basic tutorial for the new toolkit version 104 seam falloff tool which uh, creates great gradients uh, along the length and across the width of Roboto mesh seams. So here we have a imported Roboto mesh and the darker green uh, polygons you see there are the seams created by Roboto when the mesh was generated. Uh, I will point out that this model has been run through the Roboto mesh prep tool which should be applied to any imported Roboto mesh. It creates the seam center rows which are that selection of just the seam polygons and the um, seam falloff tool needs to know that so that it can apply its effect just to those seam rows. We'll get into that a little more later but let's just uh, see the tool at work. So here's the tool and um, it's going to create a falloff that starts at whatever polygons you select. You notice when I make the selection I, I slop across the seams, that's fine, it will trim that off for you. Just make sure you get the entire seam within your selection. The weight map generated by the tool will be 100% on those polygons and gradually fade uh, by the number of steps that you specify here propagating out or, or stepping along the polygons, like using the Grow tool in Moto. So I've set the length to 30, which means it will fade over a range of, of 30 polygons in each direction. And I'll go ahead and create the weight map. This alert simply tells you that it wants to copy that earlier selection set, Seam Center Rows, into one called Seam Falloff Rows, which is the selection set actually used by the tool. I would suggest you go ahead and tell it to always confirm this alert. It's certainly harmless. Alright, so there you see a selection of vertices, only uh, vertices that are affected by the new weight map that we just generated have been selected. And if we go look at that weight map, you can see that we indeed have a nice fall off and it is very uh, attuned to the seam rows. In other words, it's not a linear fall off from front to back as you would see in this view but it's actually um, based on the length of the seam and also it runs perpendicular to the seam. It's, it's uh, again very attuned to the geometry. This will become more apparent as you work with more complex scenes and more complex models. Um, the tool also did set that map as the uh, fall off. So you're ready to go and start uh, putting it to use uh, modeling. So we'll just do the very simplest thing here. We will use the um, Translate tool and just pull all this stuff up a little bit and see what we get. And there you can see the falloff at work. Note that the falloff begins at the outer edges of our selection. That's why you see a little bit of a hump here in the center because the falloff begins at the outer edges of our selected polygons. You can select vertices instead and get a falloff that starts immediately, but uh, you will find uh, Selecting ranges of polygons is a nice way to control the shape that you get. So that's the basics. Very simple. Um, and now we have some additional options we'll look at, including ease in and ease out. Now that gradient that we just generated was linear. It just falls off by equal steps as it moves away from our selected polygons. By cranking up the ease out parameter here, we'll create a gradient that starts out a little bit steeper but has a nice long gentle tail easing out as it reaches the end of the gradient. So we went ahead and generated that and you can see that nice long fade there towards the tail end of the gradient. But before we take a look at the modeling results from this weight map, I'd like to talk a little bit about the weight maps and selection sets that the script generates behind the scenes. It generates a, a weight map and sequentially numbers the weight maps as you work on a project. It also generates a temporary selection set that will be replaced every time you run the script. The GB temp fall off seed, that's the selection of the, your original polygons, your seed, if you will, for the gradient. And it creates this copy of seam center rows called seam fall off rows, which actually could be any selection with that name. But uh, for now, and for uh, convenience and un understanding, you ought to just go with the one that is a copy of seam center rows, again, created automatically. 
So here we are back again with our ease out version of the seam fall off. And you can see indeed there's this nice, very gentle slope at the tail end of the gradient right about there. And then it has to steepen up a bit to catch up and, and reach again those 100% selection polygons that we set up earlier. And again, remember that's where your fall off starts at the outer edge of of your selection, whether it be vertices or polygons. So now we'll look at the ease in option, which does the same sort of thing, except it uh, makes the slope very gentle near those C polygons, near those starting polygons, and it will get steeper as it reaches the end of the gradient. So we can see how that affects the same sort of translation, just pulling everything straight up. You see it's very flat there near the center, near the uh, selection. And gets steeper as it goes off towards the tail of the gradient. Although you'll notice it doesn't end truly abruptly. That's because this is a uh, Catmull Park mesh. And uh, also weight maps are always interpolated between uh, neighboring polygons. All right, so anyway. We'll look at one more option here, and that is to use both ease in and ease out. You can see there I have them both set to 30. And that creates something analogous to Moto's smooth mode that it has for its own internal falloffs. So it, the slope will be gentle both uh, at the start and at the end, creating kind of an S curve. And, and that's a nice option when, again, when you want everything to be nice and smooth. Okay, so that's the basics of ease in and ease out. Uh, one more thing before we move on to profiles, that is the shape across the seam. Uh, you should note that these selections we made, these so-called C polygons or vertices, uh, you're not limited to just one area. You can add them anywhere you want, and in fact you can add them on multiple seams. Uh, the tool will process all of these things at once. And in fact, if you had a true seam network, like is often the case with more complex Grobato models, it will propagate out along that network, branching when it reaches branches and that sort of thing, which can be a very, very powerful thing. But this example is, is uh, simple. I'm reducing the length of the uh, fall off because we have some seed polygons that are fairly close together. I want to make sure the effect between them shows up. Go ahead and use ease out for this. And again, a little more gentle ease out. We create a weight map. And we take a look at it. And if you look closely, it's hard to see with this red color sometimes, but you can definitely see that it, the uh, fall off is different in between those C polygons than it is near them. And it's much more obvious when we start pulling the polygons up. So as you can imagine, uh, some really wonderful things can be done with this uh, while modeling. Get this coordination between various seams or uh, to allow it to propagate throughout the seam network. All right, so now we will look at seam profiles, and that is the gradient across the seam. And for that, I've loaded a different version of this model that has more seam rows. That'll give us a better representation of the various profile options. Although I would note that um, we didn't get carried away here with profile options. Um, we have a simple set of presets. And that's because many things will affect this profile, including uh, how many seam rows you have, um, if you have any uh, edge weighting applied, and uh, the spacing of the seam rows if they aren't all the same width. And all those things can actually be used to control and vary the profile. But uh, we have some basic things here, and up to now everything you've seen has been has no pro profile whatsoever. It's just flat. So we're going to try the simplest uh, profile, linear, and I'm applying that now. And if we take a look at the weight map, you'll see that uh, indeed you can see that it's much different. There is a fall off again across the seam, quite visible in the middle areas of the gradient here. And as usual, even more apparent once we start manipulating the geometry with that weight map as our fall off. And you can see the V shape, since these uh, profiles all start at the center and move outward towards both edges. A linear fall off gives us this 
fairly sharp V-shape profile. All right, so the next one would be round, and we have just three intensities of round, round, rounder, and roundest. We'll go with the middle rounder here. And we generate the weight map. And you can see it uh, it's nice and rounded. In fact, if the height, the amount that you pull this up, is about equal to the width, you'll get something quite round. Now, of course, as you start to pull it out, because this is a weight maps are always a multiplier, it will eventually get kind of sharp. Okay, and speaking of sharp, we'll try the um, middle flavor of our sharp options, sharper, and create that weight map. And this does just the opposite. It makes a, a very sharp peak and uh, even sharper than what we had with linear. If you look closely, you can see that it starts really sharp and kind of tails off towards the outer edge with a nice slope there, a nice gentle slope there. So just another option. And again, remember that all of this can be further affected by things like uh, Catmull-Clark edge weighting and um, the spacing of your seam rows. And there's one more option, and this is the bevel option, which is useful if you want to keep the center part of your profile flat. So you notice I switch back to the flat profile in the pop-up list there, and I've set seam profile bevel rows to 1. And that means that it's flat for those center polygons, but it has a linear fall-off for however many uh, profile bevel rows you select. So there you can see it quite clearly. And again, when, uh, when height is relatively low, that's a true bevel. When it's uh, higher, uh, you get that kind of a wall effect. Okay, so in here I'm just illustrating that again, the, all along we've been using a polygon selection. Here I'm using a vertex selection. And the main difference there being that, uh, especially when you select just a single row of vertices across the seam, you get this immediate start to the fall off, and more of a peak here when we're using ease out. And once again, that was with the bevel settings, and you saw the nice flat top to the uh, profile. All right, and uh, finally, just the same thing, this time with ease in, still using the bevel profile. Uh, but by now you get the idea, and uh, lots more to be seen and learned uh, in the toolkit docs and uh, by watching additional videos, especially the Guppy Mobile video, which you can find on YouTube or linked from uh, our Grobato site. So uh, give it a try. Hope you have fun. Thanks for watching.